That's actually pretty cool. I haven't tried this before. I haven't had this power supply for too long, and so uh, I'm not really sure what it's capable of. Hey everyone, uh, in a previous video I showed a little bit about a liquid lens. So this is a device that has uh, some water and oil trapped in a capsule, and when you apply power to the capsule, it, uh, the water droplet changes shape and uh, changes the focal length of the lens. So in this video, I'm going to show you a little bit more about the fundamental concepts that are involved in a liquid lens and uh, why the thing actually works. So here I've set up a little test rig. This is just a piece of aluminum uh, angle bracket or aluminum square stock. And I've coated the top of it with Teflon tape. So this is uh, five thousandths of an inch thick. And it's actually adhesive. I'm not sure how they got the adhesive to stick to the Teflon itself. But this stuff, you know, works just sort of like scotch tape, but it's Teflon on the top and I covered the whole top of the aluminum with uh, the Teflon. And then I have this uh, small electrode sort of poking down into a droplet of salt water. It's just regular uh, table salt, salt water. I don't know what the concentration is, just sort of random. And the electrode is connected up to my high voltage supply here. So this is a low current high voltage supply. And when I turn the voltage up, the droplet changes shape. And what's interesting is I can disconnect the electrode from the supply and the droplet stays in the same shape until I short the electrode out and then when I plug it back in it changes shape again and when I take this out it still stays in the same shape until I short it so the little droplet of water is actually acting like a small capacitor as well as um, providing this, this uh, liquid lens effect so let me show you why this actually works okay so here's a cutaway view of what we're looking at so here's the aluminum base plate then there's a thin layer of Teflon, and then there's a water droplet on top of the Teflon. So normally the surface of the Teflon here is hydrophobic, meaning that the water molecules are not very uh, attracted chemically to the surface of it. So what happens is the water much more preferentially clumps to itself than clumps to the Teflon surface, and we end up with this uh, water beating up. So when you've seen the car ads with, uh, you know, the special car wax or whatever, they talk about water beating up. And the, that's the, the reason for that is that the water much more prefers to stick to itself than the surface. So things like wax and oil and Teflon are hydrophobic and cause the water to beat up. So in that state, this is sort of a simplified diagram, what we talk about is the contact angle, which is the angle that's made between the surface and the uh, tangent uh, formed by the, the droplet uh, angle coming in here. So let's just say this is 120 degrees about or whatever. And it's just the angle here to the tangent line drawn to the water droplet. Uh, now if we apply a power to this system, what we can do is put an electrode on the aluminum and put an electrode in the water. And I should add that the water is conductive. We, have, we need to add something to the water to make it conductive. Salt. Uh, some electrolyte, any electrolyte. Uh, and if we put some voltage on here, let's, uh, just, just for reference, I was using about 5 kilovolts. And the reason that the voltage has to be kind of high is because the uh, thickness of the Teflon tape is fairly uh, thick. This is 5 thousandths of an inch thick. And uh, for commercially made liquid lenses, this might only be uh, 10 microns or even 100 microns or something like that, but much thinner than, than the tape that I'm using. And the thing that actually affects how the water droplet is going to change size is the electric field uh, between it and the aluminum. So making this distance smaller or making the voltage greater will achieve essentially the same thing. So when we put power on it, the water is actually attracted. Uh, there, there's an electrostatic attraction between the water molecules and the aluminum down here. And the reason for that is that uh, H2O is a polar molecule. And when you put power, or when you, when you put an electric field uh, on the water, these water molecules will actually be preferentially pulled down towards the aluminum and also pulled out towards the aluminum. So if you're a water molecule sitting right here, you feel attraction pulling down to the aluminum when there is an electric field applied here. And eventually the water droplet will take on this shape. So here the contact angle is, let's say, 70 degrees, or whatever that is. And it changes the shape of the whole droplet uh, because those water molecules are basically being pushed down, uh, attracted downward toward the aluminum. 
So there's one more addition that we can make to, uh, to make this a little bit more useful in the, in the liquid lens situation. Uh, the problem with having just a drop of water hanging out on the surface is that if you tilt this thing uh, sideways, I mean, if you have a lens and it's in a camera and you're moving the camera around, eventually gravity will want to tug on this drop of water and change the shape uh, without you wanting to change shape. So what we can do is encase the drop of water in oil, and we're going to use an oil that's exactly the same density as water, and the oil is hydrophobic and also has a different index of refraction in terms of optical properties than the water. So this interface between the droplet of water and the oil surrounding it uh, will create a lens. And since the oil is the same density as the water, if we turn this whole thing around in space, gravity won't preferentially pull that drop of water out of shape. So we have this, this top piece. Actually, I shouldn't have drawn this with a, a meniscus on here. This is actually sort of like a, a glass window that seals this whole capsule off. So this is a flat piece of glass up here. and. Uh, for a lens, we obviously couldn't use a thick piece of aluminum down here either. So for a real liquid lens, this bottom part would also be made of glass, and our electrodes would have to be very carefully designed in order to um, make the droplet work. It looks sort of like this. So here's a crude cutaway view of how a liquid lens might be built. So we have a glass window on the bottom and a glass window on the top. One electrode goes through into the water, which is down here, and it's surrounded by oil and the other electrode goes to um, a piece of the metal case that is behind a Teflon insulator. So by applying the power or the voltage across these two electrodes, the contact angle at this point will change. And we have a similar situation where the contact angle is what changes the size of the droplet. So here the contact angle will be changed and then that changes the shape of this meniscus. So instead of having a uh, curvature like this, we might be able to make it flat uh, or we might even be able to make it bow the other way. So liquid lenses can change from no power to negative power to positive power. So if you don't believe me when I say that water is uh, attracted in an electrostatic field, uh, check this out. I've got the high voltage supply set to maybe 8 or 9 kV and when I bring the electrode close to the stream of water that's coming out of the tap here, uh, you can see that it's quite attractive. Let me uh, crank it up a little bit. A little over 10 kV now. And I've got the uh, other side of the power supply uh, attached to the water pipe. So the electrostatic field is going between the column of water and the electrode. If you don't have access to a high voltage supply, you can also generate high electrostatic fields uh, with the old comb on a cloth trick. So just by physically rubbing this together, uh, we're stripping electrons from one of these materials and depositing them in the other. So if I charge up this comb and then bring it near the column of water, you can see the electrostatic attraction there. And you can tell from the 15 kV uh, setting on my supply, I've probably got more than 15 kilovolts on this comb right now, just, just by how close this is getting and how much it's causing the water stream to deflect. It's a pretty cool demo. Um, I should also point out there's no it doesn't the polarity doesn't matter. So if the comb is positive and the water stream is negative, there will be exactly the same effect achieved uh, if if the polarities were reversed. So the reason that there is attraction and that it doesn't depend on uh, the polarity of the electrostatic field applied is because each of the little water molecules has a positive end and a negative end, and it doesn't really matter. There's no uh, overall positive or negative charge associated with the water molecules. So when I bring a charged object near the water stream, uh, let's say the comb is positive. If I bring this positively charged object towards the water stream, all the water molecules that are flowing down in the water column will rotate such that their negative end is toward the comb and their positive end is further away. So if all the molecules in here have their negative end toward the comb and their positive end further away just because the molecules themselves are polarized, then there will be a net force generated because all of the negative ends are toward the comb and all the positive ends are away and opposite charges attract. So think of it as if you were trying to attract a compass needle and you brought a magnet near the compass needle. The needle would rotate around so that the end of the needle that's attracted to the magnet is toward the magnet, and the end that isn't attracted is further away. 
So there'll be a net force, a translational force that actually tries to pull the needle towards the magnet. Okay, I hope that was helpful. See you next time.